the title is superhuman. So that's the first kind of cognitive dissonance. Why would the title be superhuman for somebody that is going to talk about technology? And the reason for that is I'm going to uh, frame today the entire discussion around technology uh, based on what all of this means uh, for you, for me, for our jobs, for our professions, for how our jobs are going to change and they're changing in what we do in the standards of performance that we can achieve and in the skills that we actually need in order to perform in a world, in a world where we can be augmented with not only data, but artificial intelligence. And see, the majority of the people in this room uh, is very familiar with studying how the consumer has changed and the consumer behavior has changed and the power of the racing consumer but we haven't spent enough time to actually figure out, well, how about the professions that actually serve that consumer? And the first thing that is hard to do is actually, we're tied to learn physics. Uh, I mean, if somebody would tell you, it's like, hey, I didn't park my car properly, could you just lift it and put it properly? You would say, I can't do that. Because the physics that you have learned tell you you don't have the ability to do that. So what I'm hoping to do in the next 10 minutes is actually uh, take you from a world where physics tells you you can't do that to a world more like that, where you actually can give yourself superpowers uh, that redefine what you can do at the level of quality that you can do, at the impact that you can do it. And I figured that the best way to uh, package this would be to describe a set of uh, superpowers. So let me start with the first superpower, omnipresence. This is the ability of being everywhere. You know, you can't do that. Well, but now you can. Because when you actually put together all the signals that are being digitized every single day, you know, whether it's weather, whether it's traffic, whether it's presence, whether, it is, uh, whether a train station is on or off, whether it is uh, flows of people, uh, you can actually uh, do real-time assortment of the optimum placement and the optimum mix within a square meter of every major city. See, we've done this in Tokyo. And uh, we were able to lift revenue by 5%. 5% may not mean a lot to much people unless uh, you're talking about like your budget, or your performance, then it seems like a lot, right? Uh, but uh, uh, we have built this thing called Metropoles. By the way, we've built this in the last year. This is not like has existed forever. This was probably improbable to achieve two years ago. It was probable to achieve, and we actually built it within the, the, the last nine months. We took 500 what we call dynamic hyperlocal signals, and we put them all together. The massive amount of data is not possible for any human mind to actually do much with it. So you need to embed artificial intelligence, which we use with Watson, to then be able to recommend within that delivery window, within that actionable window, what would be your optimum mix on a given vending machine, or on a given store, or on a given shelf. Um, and what's interesting is, you know, when you have some of these superpowers, I'll stay on this one for a second, this is a new superpower, so what's happening, the work that we're doing is we're actually working with your clients, with the retailers, to figure out how do they use this new superpower? How do they actually figure out uh, what does it mean for them, for their planning, for their assortment? And we're also working with companies like you that they're trying to figure out, well, what if you would have this superpower? What would be your relationship, not only to the consumer, but also to your clients? Could you provide incremental value in the way in which you do that collaborative planning uh, that we've been doing for the last 30 years, because now you have a better way to predict that assortment. So omnipresence, for those of you involved in operations, for those of you involved in planning, is one superpower that you can give you. Second one is clairsentience. I had to look this up, actually, to figure out what to call it. Anybody knows what clear sentience is? I was hoping nobody would raise their hand because then I can make it up. 
Actually, Claire Sentience is uh, this is a famous show uh, called Heroes that illustrates this, is the ability that when you touch an object, you can immediately know the entire history of that object. If you touch a necklace, you can know who made it, who wore it, what happened to it at every point in the history of that object. You see, we're now using clear sentience uh, in the translated to a more popular word that you may have heard called blockchain. Blockchain actually gives you the ability to touch an object and know for that specific object the entire history at an individual level. You see, Frank Giannis at uh, Walmart, he's the head of uh, food safety. He's used this, and we have proven, and you can actually see it out there. Um, you can take a slice of mango before you're going to put it in your mouth, and in 13 seconds, we can tell you the entire history of that slice of mango down to the day it was harvested in a grove in northern Mexico. It can tell you the entire temperature chain. It can tell you where it has been, who's touched it, were they certified or not. So how about that? Clear sentience, you can touch an object at scale. I know that. What that does mean? Well, it means a couple of things, I think, for you. One is <laughs> the redefinition of trust. You see, a lot of brands have lived as a proxy for trust. When you, when you have no transparency, you hang yourself to whatever you have as that proxy for trust. But you see that trade-off between trust and experience, when you embed transparency, no more. So again, in a world where you can have clear sentience as a superpower, and you have to figure out if your brand value is transparent and your product is the best, you will do very well on that transparent world. If you're not, just ask, ask Yellow Cab, then you're going to be in trouble. Now, um, I had to bring this slide. This is a favorite of Mark. Um, you can actually use these two capabilities, the ability of having a lot of data, artificial intelligence, and the ability to just touch every one of those moments, right? Your moment zero, your moment one, your moment two, instrument it uh, in a permission way to redesign how the entire chain between the advertiser and the audience is and what you as the brand get out of that. The examples that we're working on it are three categories. One category is um, basically the ability to permission data. You see, the interesting thing about blockchain is you can have all the data, but that doesn't mean you can use it. Only if you have been given permission for a very specific purpose, then you get to use that data. So if I'm the consumer, I can choose. It doesn't matter if you have my data or not, because I will choose how you get to use it. If you're the advertiser, if you're the brand, if you give me value, I will give you the choice to use my, my, my data at a very personal level. So it redefines that. Watson allows you to enrich massively the experience in digital media. So going from a one to a zero click, you click or you don't click. It's a very binary experience to go into a very rich experience where you can actually interact. You can have a conversation with that consumer. And the learnings of that conversation are yours as the brand. You can protect that, that conversation and that richer learning is yours. You can also use, with the massive amount of digital data, you can use Watson to actually uh, do the bidding for you and uh, get your dollars in advertising to go uh, uh, further. And uh, we're doing all of this today uh, with that power. Third one, the power of precognition. See, there's a difference between precognition and clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is interesting, but an irrelevant superpower. Clairvoyance is you get to see the future. You can do anything about it. How useful is that? Precognition is it allows you to see the future but it gives you the opportunity to act to change that future. This is what we're doing with a life sciences company. We actually got operations and finance. We figured that the best regression and statistics that you could do to actually forecast a product launch 
would give you an 80% accuracy, which is pretty phenomenal, right, when you're launching a product. But the moment that you actually get non-structured data, Watson, all of this into a learned aiding system, it gets you to 97 to 99% accuracy. And once you know what is going to happen, you can simulate your competition reaction, and you can simulate what it will do to your product launch, and you can change the product. You can change dosage. You can change packaging and re-simulate that until you get exactly the product launch you want. Just in two years, this company is projected to save $115 million with precognition. You see, it changes a lot of aspects of what we do. I know that um, you guys have a data science team. Most companies now have a data science team. A lot of the jobs are starting to look a lot more like data science. When we are applying this to market research, for example, uh, we're seeing a significant amount of reduction of the tedious, just basic searching of patterns to the artificial intelligence engines. Watson can save you roughly in one category, we measure uh, almost 12,000 hours and save $5 million in just what you spend to try to understand what the market thinks of a product. And you can do it with, uh, again, that power of precognition. Now, many of you may say, it's just like, okay, I don't work in branding, I don't work, so that doesn't apply to me. Not really. If you look at this and many other superpowers that I could tell you about, it really applied to almost every profession. So almost every profession will change in what you actually do, in the skills you require to do them, and the level of performance that would be expected of you uh, across everything that we do in the enterprise. So uh, as Winston Churchill said, or most popularly as the Spider-Man movie says, where there is great power, there is great responsibility. Um, these superpowers are, they change the game. Uh, they're, they're phenomenal skills that can be applied. And we, in January as a company, we think that we have a responsibility to use them in a transparent and purposeful manner. So here it is. We uh, are very clear as IBM on what purpose do we use artificial intelligence for? And we encourage all of you to ask everybody that has any kind of artificial intelligence to give you what their purpose is. Our purpose is to augment what you do in your profession. It's not to replace you. It's to augment what you do in the profession. Second element is transparency, which is uh, data is a strategic advantage. You just saw it from Tencent. Uh, your data should be yours. It should not be meshed, mingled. You have to have guarantees that you understand what's your data. And these systems, you see artificial intelligence are trained. So you should know who trained your artificial system because they're supposed to be trained for a purpose. In the same way, when you go to a doctor, you would want to know what university they went or if they just self-studied medicine, right? Uh, you uh, want to know uh, who is actually training your artificial intelligence aid and uh, all of our responsibilities to develop the new skills that make our professions actually use these capabilities and create a new future of new physics laws. So with that, I appreciate your time. I think my time is up. Um, uh, I hope that all of you come with the conviction to act and go get a new superpower. Thank you.